Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome back to my studio today. I'm going to be exploring some favourite themes today with you. Um, themes like mark making, doodles, intuitive art, semi-abstract art, and uh, of course deconstructed botanicals, which is my my particular thing for this year, my um, my go-to, if I don't know what to do, I'll paint a deconstructed flower. These are all themes I've been returning to again and again over the last little while. So why not join me for a painting session and a chat? So let's start. Today I'm going to be using my um, Viviva uh, little pan set, this one here, which looks like this after you've been using it for a little while. Um, I think this is a wonderful little set. The colours, as you can see, I've just swatched them out here quickly. They're still wet, um, but the colours are really good. Nice and bright, very transparent. Does have uh, the benefit of this, all synthetic, obviously, um, but they're very transparent colours and they're very bright and they look great. Um, so, and I think, do you know, if you're thinking about Christmas presents already, because after all, it's July, it's time to start thinking about Christmas, um, wouldn't they make a lovely gift for... Um, young teenagers or children who are just starting to get into painting. So if you follow the link um, and go to our Viviva um, affiliate page, you'll get a discount, we get a commission, and anything you buy there comes super quick from Viviva. I just want to tell you actually about Viviva a little bit. I, um, I do get a small commission from them, but I really do actually support them a lot because they, um, there's a small company started by a couple of youngsters. One's a doctor, or at least a medical student, I think he was when he started in the pandemic. And um, they employ all local women in India. I can't remember the name of the city that they're in now, but it could be Bombay or somewhere like that. Calcutta, I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's a local thing. All the ladies that work for them are really happy to be creating this wonderful product. They've got several other different things that they do as well. Um, so go and have a look at their website, um, and like I said, there's a link in the description below. Uh, right, to get back to painting, so I'm going to use that, and uh, I had a migraine yesterday, so if I lose track of what I'm doing, don't be surprised. <laughs> I am doing my best to keep myself on track today, and going to use this um, block of Mead and Watercolour paper. Also, now I'm chatting um, I'll put straight something which I said the other day. I said, if you want to loosen up your painting, it's a good idea to work on bigger sheets. I didn't mean that you needed to have a double elephant size sheet of paper. Didn't mean that. Didn't mean that if you want to make a card, you should work on a big sheet. I meant what I said, which was, <laughs> this is me having a rant, um, which was, if you want to loosen up, um, use a bigger brush big brush as opposed to small brush and use a bigger sheet of paper, a bigger sheet of paper as opposed to a small sheet of paper. Okay. And if you don't want to loosen up, ignore me. You will anyway. I don't blame you. Anyway, today I'm going to use this because it's what came to hand. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not really sure, but I'm tired of hearing myself and other people saying the same thing. In fact, I'm tired actually. I'm tired. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I'm tired. I think I'm tired. My husband came back from Egypt the other day and it's always a bit of a um, psychological adjustment process that goes on when he re-arrives. So um, that's consequently the reason for the migraine, I expect. Not that I'm blaming him, it's me. But um, what was I going to say? Yes, if I can't think what to do, it's not surprising. So um, I'm not going to moan about it, but I'm going to paint circles. And oh yes, that's why I did this. I did this so that I could say to myself, okay, 
Without the need for a box of tricks, I can figure out for myself, um, let's say we need four colors that go together and we want one bright color, one really bright color. We need one medium bright color and two more subtle colors. So um, there's any way that you could uh, combine this and depending on what kind of mood you want. So if you want a sort of spring-like mood, you would probably start with this green, for example, and then maybe you might want to use this green as well, and maybe this blue and purple. That would work. That's a palette there. So you could do that. Um, or you could, if you want something warmer, because that's a little bit on the sort of green side. So you could go, you could say, okay, I'm going to do this bright orange and this yellow and then you want something contrasting, so you might go to pink and blue, or this blue. Okay, so any four colors. And what you could do is you could pick them completely at random. You could say, eeny, meeny, makaraka, farewell, dominaka, om, pom, push, and choose that one, and then work round. So you could have that one, and that one, and that one. And then, so then the next step is to find another piece of paper. Uh, that's grey, so I won't use that. Let's find a piece of white paper. Um, that's white paper. And let's try out a couple of palettes. So the first one I said was the lime green. Lime green and... Um, uh, then I said that one, didn't I, which is, uh, let me put that round like that. Um, mum, 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 where am I? Lime green, it's this one. So I'm going to lay out my options here just to see. So that's that. And then I said with that, I would put this blue, which is this color here. And then I said, what did I say? That one, that one, that one, and yellow, wasn't it, I think. Was that right? Anyway, that would work. That would be a good palette. That's a good one. Or you could start with orange. Um, let's say this one. And then you could have, um, depends, if you wanted an autumn theme, you would immediately go to the brown, wouldn't you? Um, but I was thinking more, we would be quite bold and go for orange and red, let's say. And then we might want <coughs> um, this green again. Oops, not that one, this one. And then, yeah, you could you could go with that again, and that would be very um, punchy. So anyway, what I'm going to do today, and you could just carry on until you find one that you like, and that's much more likely to bring you into a position of being able to paint than it is to use a box of tricks. Boxes of tricks not allowed in this channel. So I'm going to start with a circle of this colour. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The first thing that makes me want to do is to put another green in the center like that and then let that mix and mingle. As soon as you get started with this, you, um, you find you need a little palette. Um, so I'll bring that over. Just make sure you can see me. So then we'll put some of that and some of that and look at that. that beautiful colour. And if you want to make it more muted, what you do is you put a little bit of red into it. So that'll knock it back to a kind of subtle thing. And if you want to make it more bluish, then you would add a bit more blue, like that. And that's quite a beautiful colour, so we'll put that there. You see, that's a long way from from here, 
but you've made it just using these colours in your in your little Viviva palette. And then you could put the darker blue in the centre and let that run. And because we're going to doodle on this, we're going to make um, doodly things. Uh, I want some nice darks. And then this now I'm going to put, and lighten that right up. Maybe I'll put a little bit more yellow in there and I'm going to put that in the middle. By the time you've got to this point in your painting, you've forgotten what your name is. You, you've kind of lost, uh, lost your inhibitions about putting paint on paper and you're just going for it, right? And so we said we would have a contrast, didn't we, of um, a pure blue. But I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking, you know what, I think I'm going to head more in the direction of this area there. Maybe I'll be really bold and take some red. I need another palette. Take some red and mix it with some orange. And then maybe we'll put some nice contrasting, always trying to avoid making it look like dried blood. And then another one perhaps down here. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Just try not to let that run too much. And then perhaps we'll put one down here. And I'm sort of leaving spaces in between because I want to uh, fill the gaps with some, some vines and some flowers. And I'm going to come back to the green with a bit more yellow and put something here. This is all so much available to you just to, just to enjoy the colours. When I have a, a headache or I actually have silent migraines, you know what that is? Silent migraines are migraines when you get all the symptoms and the visual disturbance and everything, which is always a bit un unnerving. But I don't get the headache, thank goodness. And uh, I think it's caused by uh, eating the wrong thing. I have sort of histamine intolerance and stuff like that. And, and uh, I shouldn't eat eggs, which I did. Um, what was I going to say? I always listen to Michael Seeley um, to try to overcome my panic attacks and stuff. Um, but I think what I probably ought to do is get the paints out and try and paint something. But somehow you don't necessarily feel like that, do you, when you're having a, an issue? Right, so that's enough circles, I think. So we'll let that dry. And then I'll come back and I'll do some, some leafy things. This one I know looks very dark compared to the others, but um, I kind of wanted that because I'm going to put white on top of that. And it's possible... It's possible that this one ought to be a bit darker, maybe. Maybe it should. Perhaps I, sh I should add a little bit of a darker green to that, maybe. Maybe it wants, maybe it even wants a bit of blue. Maybe it wants a bit, a bit of that colour. You can always go over the top of what you have, of what you have done. You can always do that. But don't, you don't want to uh, rub it too much, just let it sit. That'll do, that'll dry a bit darker. Okay, so I'm going to whack the hairdryer on that. So I should have said what I was using in the way of a brush. This is Princeton Aqua Elite size 12. I think that's what I was using, wasn't it? It's wet, it must be. And now I'm going down a size or two to the Aqua Elite size eight here. And uh, I think 
Um, for this particular version of this specific thing, I'm going to try to um, use um, some greens and blues, and we'll start off with what we've already got mixed. And I'm, I'm going to start up here with a line which is uh, a sort of stem, and then I'm just going to put in some leaves on the stem. And uh, this is something that you can uh, do in your own specific style. You don't have to obviously copy what I'm doing. Um, I like to put in the shapes and then add some more colour, second colour, sort of near the bottom there. And then just change up the colours a bit as we go down. You can do more of that if you want. I won't do too much because it will take too long if I mess around too much. So I'm always aware of time factor. Um, so that's one. And we can go, we could go for a much darker starting point and we could make the leaves longer and thinner and closer together. The nice thing about this brush, I do like these brushes, I would recommend them. Um, I have to turn the paper around a little bit to get that in the right direction. I'm trying not to put my hand on what I've just done. I'm just laying it down in one little mini stroke, not even not doing anything really letting it do its thing and turn that round and then maybe maybe I'll go for some orangey pink something oh that's unbelievably strong isn't it I really wanted that little bit more orange no doubt it will die back a bit um, let's put that here and uh, let's put some more circular, bigger, slightly bigger leaves. Doesn't matter if they go over the uh, circles. This isn't what I had intended to do today. I was going to do um, a background using some gold. Um, and I'm going to put, um, let's pick up a little bit of dark something dark and just pop that in at the corner of the points here so that can bleed a little bit just for the sake of interest you never know what that's going to do it usually bleeds quite a lot um, okay and then maybe I'll use that same color down here perhaps we'll bring this one through like that maybe um, Going to just pick up some different reds for this one, some oranges. Not that kind of orange. We've done quite a few similar, haven't we, to this really? A little bit similar. See how much that's faded? That's the paper sucking up the colour. Um, but I don't think I've done one quite this small. And I do want to say again that if you paint small like this, you will find yourself being a bit more finickety. You can't help it because you've just got to work smaller. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the dark red and just again come back, drop that in. put in some little stalks and I think we need green here don't we clean the brush go back to the greeny blue colors and let's um, let's come down here um, what shall we do how should we do this we could have something like that Who's barking out there? As you can see, I'm to get these fine 
lines, I just use the very tip of the brush. After a while, this sort of thing becomes automatic and you don't even think about it. But at first you do have to practice. But it's worth it because in the end, you'll find you don't need to keep swapping to different brushes. You just need one, one or two really good ones. For years and years I painted with uh, the best brushes I could find, but I never ever found anything that had a really good point until I came across the draw well brushes from Japan, which I use a lot. Um, when I did a course with someone, this is a long time ago, this is 20, 25 years ago before when I lived in Kent in England, Eastling Faversham, Kent, England. Uh, and uh, Hugh Brading was his name from New Zealand and he used these brushes from Japan and it changed my whole uh, ability to paint by getting the right brushes. I, so I used to get him to send them to me from uh, New Zealand until he got too old to want to be bothered with that and then I finally uh, managed to get in touch with Drawwell myself and now... I get them direct from them. And if I didn't live in France, if I lived in America, I would try to import them and make them available to you and I would ship them to you. But I live in France and it's the very devil here to um, get anything out of and into the country. It's absolutely ridiculous restrictions on customs and so on. It's just a nightmare. and very expensive, so I haven't really got very far with that whole idea. Um, okay, although I would love to be able to do that. I'm going to put a, a branch coming in from the side here with some orange petals, quite big ones perhaps. And then maybe I'll put a few up the top, coming down here maybe. And maybe one or two here. Okay, so now when that's dry, we can um, do the doodling. So I'll turn you off for a second and uh, doesn't look much at the moment, does it? And I'll be back in a tick. Okay, so now for the fun bit and we'll start to do some designs on here and uh, we'll see what happens as we go along. We have to try to start from nowhere and um, just build things up a little bit and see where it goes. But you have to have patience, especially with the white pen. It's true that it's better if you don't press too hard with these white pens you tend to think, oh, I'm, I need to press hard because it doesn't want to come out. But the harder you press, the less likely it is to release itself. It's true. Um, so it's a matter of trying as best you can to be gentle. And uh, take your time. And not start thinking about whether or not you need another cup of coffee. A cockerel seems to think it's breakfast time. Can you hear him in the background? Oh, by the way, while I think of it, um, I wanted to say thank you to everybody for the amazing comments that um, you've been leaving on the last video, the last one to go up, which was another mark making one. Um, pink it was. Um, I, I'm sorry, but I can't possibly reply personally to everybody. I've done my best, but there were so many comments. I just can't um, get round to all of them. And I, I, I hate it when that happens because um, I know, well, all of your comments are so heartfelt and they're lovely to read. And I do read them all, honest. 
I do. Um, I'm going to perhaps come in with a little bit of black here, maybe around here. But I can't, I, this time I can't. So don't stop leaving comments and because um, they do get read and we do try to answer as many as possible. Um, and if you have a specific question about something that you need an answer to, just drop me a line on the email, um, studio at dianeanton.com, for example. Um, and that will sort of get to the top of the heap. Or um, join the membership, either the Patreon membership or the YouTube membership, and um, that will always get you through to me more efficiently if you want to have conversations about something. I'm really, you know, more than willing to chat with anyone. And uh, I've got some, some really good friends who um, have sort of written me letters people like Gail and Denise and Posey and Lucinda and Elaine and lots of you. And I really appreciate your conversations and your input and your sharing and everything. But what with this migraine and everything, I don't think I'm going to get round to answering all the, all the, all the comments. But as um, Tamsin keeps reminding me to say this, and I'm going to say it because I've remembered this time, um, if someone makes a comment on one of the videos and you feel that you would like to help out or join in, or it doesn't even have to be helpful, it could just be, you know, sharing a thought, please do. It's not um, forbidden. And um, the more you do that, the better it is from the point of view of YouTube. The famous YouTube algorithm likes to have people have conversations. They call it engagement. I feel like I'm designing a planet here. Remember Slarty Bartfast from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Planet and the uh, Designing of the Norwegian Fjords. Does that strike a bell with anybody? Um, so that's that one done. <laughs> and uh, should we do this one up top here? I don't think I'm going to start with black. I'll start with white, I think. Let's, um, let's put some vertical lines maybe here. I was a bit wary about vertical lines because they very so easily can turn into looking like stitches. I don't mean sewing stitches, I mean stitches on a um, wound. I don't know, that must be my brain. What's left of it? Let's put some black dots in the centre of those. And maybe we'll put some circles in between these. Um, and then I'm going to do another row of dots here. I'm using a Tombow brush pen here. Um, this is Fudenosuke Tombow brush pen. Um, what shall I do here? Maybe I'll go in and out. In and out the dusty roses. Remember that? And um, what next? Let's take these lines and go around here. Looks like a big smile. That's another row. So it doesn't look quite like a smile. And we need a bit more gold on here, do we? It doesn't matter at all what you do. That's the fantastic thing about this kind of art. 
it doesn't matter at all what you do because it doesn't have to look like anything. And that's the trouble with figurative art where you're trying to make things resemble things like yesterday I had to paint a deck chair with a blanket on it or a towel and uh, I don't think I made a very good job of it but it was fun. However, when you're feeling less than uh, uh, confident, let's say, less than confident, um, painting something to look like something can be too much for you. And especially if you've been having some traumas and things. So it's better to go for something like this, um, which is, um, you know, it doesn't matter. It really, 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 really doesn't matter. So let's, um, let's make... Should we make this one into a mandala? Let's put a, um, a circle in the middle. And um, so you sort of divide it. I think the idea of making a mandala is you, you give yourself guidelines by doing circles within the circle. And that's the key. And then you're going to um, make a pattern which sort of radiates out evenly. Like starting like that, and then maybe we'll change to white and we'll go round again. Sorry about the noise, that's my husband. Okay, so sorry about that. I've uh, stopped him from making that noise and I've gone, given me the opportunity to go and have a quick cup of coffee and come back with this example of a mandala, which we did in a video the other day. I cut this one out um, to remind myself how to do it. So I'm going to pop that there. And I might pick up a little bit of gold paint at this point. I think it's a good idea. Um, this is my Kaleri, Fine Tech Kaleri set. And um, I'll go for a slightly smaller brush and just pick up some. I pre-wet it so it's uh, it's nicely activated, might be a bit too wet, but we'll pop in some, some gold uh, leaves around the outside of this section, I think. We can probably get away with indulging ourselves in quite a lot of gold at this point. Always looks good on these paintings gold and it looks particularly good if you pair it with black in any way that you can think of because obviously there's a big contrast isn't there between black and gold so when that's dry we could go around the outside edges of that and while I've got it on this brush um, we could come in and put some gold berries, if you want to call them berries, in some of these spaces. That's one thing that we could do to fill these spaces. And uh, I'll think about uh, what else I might want to do. Um, since I've got, as I say, since I've got the gold, let's, uh, let's just fill up these circles down here. Sometimes the unfilled circles don't look quite right. And then we can put in some more gold if we want to. Like that and yes, because if you haven't got one of these pens, but you do have the paints, you know, don't hesitate, you can do that. Uh, now, let me think, what next? Um, maybe some white here, like I did, I did some, some, um, yeah, so the pen was working a bit better then. It's not showing up terribly well on here. So that's probably not a good idea. Um, let me see. Think about that, come back to that, I think. 
and um Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's. I was looking just now at some crochet circles that I'd done, which started off like this. It's funny how you get some sort of inspirational ideas. It's not quite like this, but something like this. And that, of course, is going to look much better once I filled it with gold. I know a lot of you are having really hot weather at the moment over there in America. We, on the other hand, are having one of the coldest Julys I can ever remember. Uh, in contrast to last July, which was one of the hottest I could ever remember. So. See how much better that looks once those rather ugly shapes are filled with gold. It's quite remarkable, really. And then we we'll put some light circles around these. The pen's okay on darker colours, shows up. It's okay if you use it slowly and lightly. I have yet to find an ideal white pen. Um, Let's see if I can make this do a circle. Yes. The Sigma Unipol Sigma uh, white ones are probably the best I've found. I've tried a couple of others that have been recommended to me, but for my paper and perhaps for my style, I haven't found anything else that works better. So I could, I, I would probably recommend these. Just as being the, sort of the best of a bunch. Okay, uh, now let's see what next. Um, we could, what could we do? What could we do? Um, we could do a big leaf. One big one. One big leaf shape like that, perhaps. With a centre vein. And then more veins. And then we could perhaps have a wiggly line like that, maybe. Um, and swap to gold. This is all up to you. It's your imagination is the only thing that's going to limit you here. Your ability to let go and um, relax into it and just let it do whatever it wants to do. I usually find I get into the mood just before I'm finished. Some people I've noticed on YouTube, some of the tutors have been have taken to doing more than one painting at a time. Um, so they've got two on the go at the same time. And that's not a bad idea. I've done that before too. And uh, I remember once I had a painting session when I wanted to do some paintings to go with a poem that somebody I knew had written. And I did about 10 um, paintings in, this was in gouache. And I had them all spread out around the um, bedroom. I was doing them in my bedroom, but it was before I had a studio. A long time ago now, 25 years ago at least. Um, yeah, so I was working on them all at the same time. But I think that's probably the only time I've ever done that. And I was inspired to do it by this, this poem that he'd written. A friend of mine, he was um, 
schizophrenic actually and irresistibly so. And those little tragedies of life. Okay, I think I'll leave that one like that. That's quite nice, isn't it? I'm not unhappy with that one. Um, let me see, what shall we do? Um, oh yeah, I said I would probably go around the outside edges of these leaves. I think I might do it in white rather than black, because I think there's probably quite enough black there. Come on, pen. Don't let me down. Yeah, the um, the idea of uh, taking a photocopy of your work halfway through, I want to mention that. Again, I did that earlier while well, I just had a brief pause. I took a photocopy and I tried out a couple of ideas, um, which I consequently, subsequently uh, rejected as not being what I wanted to do today. Um, oh, i tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do some infill using small spirals. I'm not going to use that pen though. Let me find another black pen because the I don't like that scratchy noise. I don't expect you do either. It's better. And then let's put another thinner leaf in here to fill that space. I think I tend to be inclined to stop too soon sometimes with these pieces. But once, once a painting of mine is done, I very, very rarely go back and alter it in the future. I, I'm not that kind of person. I tend to think a painting is of the moment and then to go back to it later, well, I would sooner just simply do another painting, really. Because we change and it's nice to have the record of what you did like 10 or 20 years ago. And if you constantly go back and change things, alter the painting. I don't know, it doesn't, that doesn't sort of work for me, but I'm sure it works for some people. Okay, I definitely find though as I sort of get started and I like the idea of doing the mandala type pattern, don't you? Sort of starting in the center and working out. And so maybe I'll do the same thing here. And here I'm using the um, Stettler pigment liner. That's a 0.5 size. And uh, I don't know if that means anything, but it says it's 0.5. So we'll do a little mini mandala here as well, I think. Dividing it up, it gives you structure like that. And perhaps we'll come in with some biggish sort of white circles. And then maybe inside again. And then maybe in the middle, I might put a black dot. You could do this a different way. You could use, for example, multicolored brush pens. No, not that one. That's that's the brush pen. Let's just do this uh, and, and so on. But if you limit yourself to, let's say, gold, black and white, you will have a certain amount of um, coherence, it sort of hangs together a bit better than if you bring in lots and lots and lots of different colours. That's the same colour palette, isn't it, as that? This is one I did a few weeks ago, <clears throat> and um, well, I did this one at the same time in purple and orange, and this one in orange and green, just to show you really that um, 
any colours will go together. Any colours go together. It's just a matter of putting them there. And I've never seen a colour jump off the page and run away when you put it with another colour, have you? No. Right, so the next one. What should we do? What should we do here? Um, I'm sort of thinking I quite might quite like to um, uh, now let me see what was I looking at oh yes um, let's put some dots shall we let's just do some dots on this one little mini circles dot type of things If you get the chance to leave a comment underneath this video, even if it's an insult, I don't care. It's fine. Any any uh, engagement is good. I'm just joking. I know nobody ever, ever says anything negative. Um, I'm just joking. Bad joke? Um, that would be wonderful. I haven't finished yet, by the way, so don't go away. Uh, and um, if you want to join, go to patreon.com slash studio and you can join Patreon there. You can actually join for free at the moment. You don't get all the perks, but they allow you to join and you can see some, only some of our posts on there. And that gives you a taste of it so you can sort of try it out. And we're hoping that some people who go over and try it out for free are going to convert into, you know, paying members. The first level is only two ninety nine, and Patreon, when it started a few years ago with the advent of um, Jordan Peterson and all that, um, the idea, it was set up in order to support starving artists. It wasn't intended that you would get a massive amount in return, uh, but it's kind of changed its um, uh, mission now, and it has become a little bit more a matter of what the patron can get out of it, which is, you know, fine, whatever. Uh, but we joined Patreon because we needed some way of allowing people to uh, support us financially because YouTube isn't very good at doing that. I'm just going over these leaves now with some gold, outlining them with gold rather than black and sort of just going outside the paint a little bit to give them a bit more freedom. They're desperate to get out and go out and have fun. Um, we have a, a sister channel, a little channel that Tamsin started years ago called From the Garden. And um, there's a link in the <clears throat> description below. If, you, uh, if you're interested in nature, you might be interested to go over there and have a look She's just, um, I'm not sure she's put it up yet, but she's going to. Uh, by the time you see this, it probably will be up. Um, a little video showing a ladybird and an ant and some aphids on a plant having an interaction. It's really, really sweet and funny and amazing, actually, that she was standing there when this happened. And uh, the ant is significantly smaller than the ladybird. But I won't spoil it by telling you what happens. Nobody gets killed. So it's completely uh, blood-free nature. But worth having a look at. Definitely. I'm going to go and have another look at it in a minute after I finish this. Just going over the outlines of these leaves, it doesn't really look as if it's made any difference until it's all done. And then it just gives so much more um, complexity really, and layers of interest that you can't necessarily see until you look really closely, but it is there nevertheless. Um, I'm getting close to the end. Definitely getting close to the end. 
Let's put a nice quick wavy line around here. This one's not going to get the full treatment because it's on the edge. And this one too, I think I'll do this one the same. Okay, uh, one more to do. And let's think, what shall we do with that one? Maybe we'll put some nice circles like that. And then maybe we'll put dots around the outside edge. like little suns. Okay, and then perhaps we can do little spirals in the center. Like that, maybe. And uh, I think maybe it needs one here behind that. Okay, and I'm going to put some leaves in between. And a few more circles just to fill it up and then perhaps so we should have a little bit of black, just light. This, this pen is kind of running out, so it gives me a nice irregular uh, mark. It's what mark making is all about, isn't it? It's a case of finding different ways of doing different textures and so on and so forth. Maybe this one down here would quite like to have some scritchy scratchy outlines to its leaves. Now the question is, all these white spaces, how am I going to fill them up? And am I going to fill them up really, I suppose? Um, we can look at it and say, yeah, I think probably we need a few more extra leaves there, don't we? Uh, okay, so I think it might be time to... Shall I do it with a brush or shall I do it with a brush pen? I could have a go with a brush pen, couldn't I? That's always um, an easy way of doing this. I think I might go with green. Um, let me see, what have I got here? Okay, well that's, this is a, where's my sample? Yeah. Um, it's quite a dark one, I don't know, let's, let's see. The reason why you might want to use a brush pen is because you really can get quite delicate, which isn't that easy with a regular brush, obviously. And I don't have um, markers. I've only got these brush pens, but I, I think that works. So we just put this little motif in the spaces. Yeah, I think that's... Okay, 
It's probably good enough. Airplane going over. Don't be afraid to overlap them if you feel you need to do that. You can just kind of take one and go right over the top of another one. And that can be quite effective. It's quite a good idea to have for your final touches, you know, the, uh, the darker colour, something quite strong. And this dark green is about ideal, actually. I picked that out more or less at random. But I think uh, even if I'd thought about it, I don't think I would have come up with a better option. It needs to be something that will contrast strongly with the rest of it. And it, it kind of picks up that that green that we did there. Um, we did some gold dots there, didn't we? Um, might want to do a few more of those. I'm not sure if I want to put any more of these dark ones in. Maybe not. But you can also, if you wanted to, you could come into, into your existing uh, design and you could add something like this going around the outside edge if you wanted if you feel that you'd like to emphasize that I don't know where all these airplanes are coming from And I think we're coming to the end now. So I'm going to start saying all that stuff that you already know. You know, like and subscribe, turn on notifications, leave us a comment, have a look at the description below the video for the information on the Viviva paints and the other things that I've used. Poetic brush pens, the Tombow Fudinisake uh, pen, um, Sigma white gel pen, Stettler liner, and so on. And maybe I need another one here. And uh, leave us a comment. Please do. Please don't be upset if I don't get around to answering you. Um, sending you all lots of love and hoping that you have a great rest of the week and that it's not too hot or smoky where you are. If you happen to live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, you might be. My uh, ex lives in Edmonton and he was told to pack a suitcase and have it handy in case they had to be evacuated. It's so bad. And, um, you know, this is tragic. I'm really quite upset about all of that, aren't you? Uh, right, we could go on. We could carry on. I'm just overlapping some of these now because I'll never come back to this. What I don't do now, I won't ever do. So, you know. Okay, let's leave it like that. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Give us a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Have a wonderful day. Sending you all hugs and kisses. And I'll see you again soon. So bye for now, everyone. Bye bye.